Hey there, welcome back. We're still working on those parts attached to the back wheel, so let's jump right in. First up, you're going to want to grab your gizmo and bring up the cylinder 3D. Press unify and set the H divides to 100. Then scale it into Z axis. Next you're going to inset the flat island on both sides of the cylinder. Then we're going to move on to Q meshing the polygroup island. Q mesh the poly loop and extend it out a little bit. We need to make sure it's looking like our reference, so feel free to make a few adjustments here and there. Once you're happy, switch over to Inset Poly Loop. Then delete the two outer edge loops to create the taper. Turn on symmetry in the Z axis and set the radial count to 5. Mask out four faces. Invert the mask and extrude them using the gizmo. Then scale down the unmasked faces along the X axis. Let's add two edge loops to even out the topology. Turn on dynamic and press crease PG. Set the blur to zero and the poly count to 1 million. Then turn on Use Auto Scaler. Set the radial count up to 38. And use the Clip Circle Center Brush by pressing Control, Shift, and Alt. Time to switch over to the nudge brush to add a slight downward slope. Let's go ahead and do the same on the other side. All right, now for everybody's favorite, the chain. From your gizmo, grab the cylinder 3D with an H divide of 16. Choose the slice circle brush and then delete the middle edge loop. Next, scale the cylinder along the Z axis. Then we can Q mesh the polygroup island. Start moving those points outwards using the Move Infinite Depth Brush and clip back the rest. We're going to unmask those faces and use Control and the Gizmo to extrude. Once done, clear the mask and hold Control and move the Gizmo to duplicate your mesh. Rotate it 180 degrees along the Y axis and leave some room to Q mesh the flat island. Hide the middle six faces and hit Ctrl and W to group visible. Now do a inset polygroup all. Unmask the inner polygroup and use Polish by Features a few times to round out the edges. Now we can use the gizmo and masking to create the shape we need. You mesh that polygroup island and hit Ctrl W again to group visible. Press QC50 and uncrease a few of those edges in the middle hole.
Now we can use the bevel width slider to bevel the creased edges. If you hold control while using the slider, it will target the poly groups instead. Set the Z modeler brush to do nothing for both the polygons and edges. This means when we use the slide point action and brush size for the target, we won't disrupt the nearby points along the bevel. Now press Crease PG and turn on Dynamic. When we set the crease level to 2, you can see the shading error we are having when a pole hits that crease line. But don't worry, there's a quick fix. Select Inset Polygroup Island with the modifier set to standard. What we're doing is adding a poly loop around the borders of the polygroup island. This will create a buffer zone between the pole and the creased edge, fixing the shading issue. Pressing Uncrease All followed by Crease PG will get our creasing back on track. Now slightly scale the model and duplicate it by holding control and dragging with the gizmo. Move the new piece up until the back holes align with the masked front hole. Let's clear the mask. Control move with our gizmo to make a duplicate and rotate it 180 degrees on the x-axis. With the outside of the chain done, it's time to model the pins. Mask the model, then bring in a cylinder 3D from the gizmo. Invert the mask and split unmasked points. Deactivate dynamic and scale it along the z-axis. Use the slice circle brush to insert an edge loop. And QMesh Polygroup All to extrude it out. While I continue modeling these pins in the background, which is pretty straightforward stuff, let's talk a little bit about custom UIs. I have a few thoughts I'd love to share, especially how they relate to workflows and tutorials. Now, if a tutorial is geared toward beginners, I firmly believe that it's best to stick with the default UI. However, when it comes to advanced tutorials where the focus is on the workflow, I feel it's crucial to demonstrate how you operate day to day, especially in longer tutorials that take you through the entire process. Honestly, I can't imagine constantly navigating through all the palettes each time I need to use a feature. That would just double or triple the recording time. At this stage, it's less about the location of every single feature and more about refining your workflow and applying techniques so you can develop your own creative process. Things like viewport navigation and saving projects should already be second nature. Even though some people aren't huge fans of the ZBrush user interface, I personally love the extent to which you can tailor it. Plus, it's got its own built-in documentation, which I found super handy in the past. If you're moving beyond the beginner stage and starting to develop your own custom UI, I really encourage you to adapt it to suit your personal workflow. It's completely fine to start out with a layout or color scheme from other artists that you like, but then make it your own by adding the features you most frequently use. It's all about enhancing your workflow and productivity. Now let's make a couple quick adjustments to the pins. Use the Mask Perfect Circle Brush to mask the interior of the pins. Then press Ctrl W to assign a polygroup to the mask section. Next, let us use QMesh Polygroup All with the Shift key press to shrink the hole a bit. Slide down at middle edge loop and see how it looks.
now mask the model and bring in a cylinder 3D from the gizmo. Invert the mask, split unmask points, and turn off dynamic. Go ahead and scale it down a bit. With the Move Infinite Depth Brush, we can adjust a few points. Unmask the remaining faces and clip them back. Now go ahead and press W to bring up the gizmo and Control Move to extrude. Then we can scale it in the x-axis and move it down a tad. Let's add some edge loops with the Zmodeler brush. Then center the gizmo and select Deformer Soft. I'm looking to adjust the top arc slightly. When it's finished, press Accept to lock in your changes. Press Group by Normals and delete everything but the red polygroup. Now perform a Q-Mesh Polygroup All to give it some thickness. Now we can switch to the Link Subtool and turn off Dynamic. Snap the camera to the top-down view. Let's quickly demo how the Nano Mesh behaves by default. Now a cube should be inserted into the face you choose. Go ahead and press the B key to bring up the brush menu, and at the bottom, click on Create Insert Mesh. And when ZBrush asks, choose New. Press the B key again and select Create Nano Mesh Brush. Now when we drag in the face, our link is inserted based on the orientation that we captured it from. Let's go back to our Extruded Path subtool and this time select Polygroup All for the target. If it's looking a little odd, don't worry, we'll sort it all out. Go to the Nano Mesh tab and take a look at the Alignment menu. It's currently set to No Alignment. What we want to do is click on Align to Normal, and you'll see each Nano Mesh aligning itself based on the surface normals. Now go ahead and click on Align to Short Edge, and it's looking much better as each Nano Mesh aligns itself to the shortest edge of the placement polygon. However, if you want to adjust the scale of the polygon strip with the gizmo so that the pins align, you'll notice the alignment is a little off. So to fix this, set it to align to normal and set the Z rotation to negative 90. Now when you mask the polygon strip and scale it, the nano mesh behaves as expected. Let's go ahead and do the same for the bottom. Unmask the polys and scale them inwards for a better pin alignment. We just have one more minor issue to address. For now, click 1 to mesh to convert the nano mesh into actual geometry. We can also go ahead and delete the polygon strip as it served its purpose. Hide these two pins and links, then delete.
unmask the top chain and get it into position. Let's go ahead and double check that every single vert is unmasked. This technique is my go-to when creating chains, tank treads, and things of that nature. 